Here we are at a client's pump, and we're going to show you how to change it real quick. Now, the settings, this setting schedule works for the IntelliFlow and the IntelliPro pumps by Pentair. So, first thing you want to do is go ahead and hit the Start Stop button. That allows us to program mode. After that, you want to hit Menu. Now we're in the settings. Hit Select to highlight that. And the first thing that pops up is Date and Time. So hit Select again. And then you can see here, the date and time is correct, but if we wanted to change it, you hit Select. And then you can scroll through here to change it. So if we want to make it March 26, for instance, after that, we just go ahead and hit Save. And it would save it as March 26. But since that's not the correct time, hit or date, hit select. Go back here to February 26th and hit save. Now, if you notice, as you get in through the settings, you'll see that these directional arrows change because the pump tells you what you can and can't hit. So you see how they just change from all directions to just up and down. So we hit down. Actually, let's go back. So if we try hitting the left or right side or any button that's not allowing us to, it gives us a key error. So now we're in time. If we want to change that, we hit select, and we just go through and change whatever time we want. Now, if we want to get um, to AM, for instance, just run past 12, and you'll see it changes to AM. And that's how that works. So you see how it says 5.59 right here. As soon as we hit save, it changes the time. So this time in the corner tells us what the pump thinks the time is. Hit select again. We're going to change that to five because it's about that's the right time. Hit save, and that's how you change the time. AM and PM function that allows us to do if we want 12 or 24 hour military time. So if we wanted to change that to 24 hour, we would do that and see how it changed up here to 17:59. But we're going to go ahead and change that again because we like AM and PM. So once it's highlighted and we like it, we hit save. And that's that, that's date, time, and all that stuff. So get back. Now we're min and max. So now we're gonna program the minimum speed of the pump and also the maximum speed of the pump. So to get into, we hit select. And then the minimum speed of the pump is 500. If we wanted to change that, we'd hit select to click into it. And then we would say we wanted to run at a minimum of 1500 RPMs we would go ahead and, and save that, but we're gonna go ahead and turn that back down to 500. Hit save, that's done. The maximum speed is 2850, we're also gonna leave that alone, but if you wanted to change it, say you wanna change it 1850 maximum RPMs or 1900 for instance, we would leave that there. And then once you're happy with the speed you want, go ahead and hit save, and you're done. Now this feature, is this is the VSF pump, so it allows us to change it to gallons per minute as well. This system has an iChlor system in it, salt system, so we want the flow switch to be activated, so the minimum speed for that is 20 gallons per minute, so we'll go ahead and leave it at 25. If you have other systems like a heater or anything like that, you want to make sure that it is, um, you're going to be activating the flow switch, so you definitely need to take note of that. You also have the ability to change the maximum gallons per minute. Also the PSI you can change if you want. So this pump gives you a lot of options for how you want it to run. Go ahead and hit back. Device. Devices, if you have multiple pumps and automation, you got a spa pump, you got you know your main pool pump, you can change the address. This is the only one here, so we're gonna leave that at one. This was a second pump in a system. We'd go ahead and change that to two. But since this is the only one, we're gonna save that there. Go ahead and hit back. Alarm log, this lets you, this is like a savings log of all the issues that have happened with your pump. So we see here loss of prime, loss of prime, thermal mode, we'll get into that in a bit. Another thermal mode since we just went through winter. So this keeps a running log of all the errors with the pump. That's a great feature. And date and time, so. We've gone through that part of the settings, so hit back, hit down. Now this is the programs, one through eight. So this allows us to program all the speeds we want, the times, the run times, all that stuff. Now I have another video out there where I program speeds one through four as all egg timers. And the reason I wanna do that is it allows me to 
programmed in such a way where if anyone comes up and hit any of these buttons, they don't mess up the uh, schedules that I want the pump to run at a bare minimum. So, program one here, hit select, click into it, highlight that. Now, this will allow you to change it from manual to schedule to egg timer. So, manual is where someone has to manually come out and hit one once to turn it on, once to turn it off. Schedule is a schedule you know, where you want to run from a certain time and a certain speed. An egg timer is the one we've liked, one through four. Oh, whoops. You want to hit save. And then speed here. We want speed type. Now this gives you the ability to run at flow, gallons per minute, or speed. So we'll hit speed there. This is the speed setting we want it to be at. If you wanted to change that, just hit select, click into it change it to whatever you want. Once you're happy, hit save. And then also the run time. This is important for egg timers. So basically this speed one is set to run for one hour at 2450 RPMs. So once you're done with that, you just go through program speed two for whatever you want and go down to you're done with speed four. Again, I recommend setting those as egg timers for various different speeds. So that way you can the client can see that something's happening when they hit buttons, but they're not altering the programming of the pump. I also do recommend setting one of these to run for, if they have a cleaner, to run for four hours near full speed to get that cleaner working for, you know, four hours to clean it up, the pool up. Once we get here to five, now this is where we want to uh, program our schedules. So that way in the back end, we still got our schedule running because if they hit speeds one through four, it'll only work for that duration that you have a set and then it'll automatically fold over into, you know, whatever schedule you have here because uh, the schedules trump anything else. So speed type, we want it on speed. Again, the uh, RPMs is 2,500. We'll go ahead and leave that alone. It starts at 8 a.m. If you want to change, if you want to come on at 7 a.m. for instance, you hit select, go here to the arrows, do that and then once you're happy just hit save then stop time we're gonna have that turn off at 12 p.m. which is good and that's that so that's program 5 now we're gonna go to program 6 which is again is gonna be schedule speed this is gonna be running for a thousand rpms it's gonna be starting at 1201 p.m. so right after schedule 5 and it's going to run basically 24 hours all the way to 7.59 a.m. at a very low speed to maximize savings for the client but also still get that turnover that we want. So you could also go through and program setting, settings 7 through 8 if you wanted to, but we're going to omit that. External control if you have automation or an external controller. Features, click into that. Timeout, so we're going to program these two settings right here. We want to click into that. So timeout mode we'll have for three hours. Whoops. And uh, if we want to change that, we hit select and change that however we want. Once we're happy with our time, hit save and back out to quick clean. We want to change that. We want it on speed. 2850 RPMs. And it's ran at four hours, so we're going to change that to run for one hour. Quick clean, hit save. So now, timeout's going to run for three hours, and quick clean's going to run for one hour. And back out of that, back out of that again. Priming. So if we want to change how this pump primes or not at all, uh, we would change it here and enabled and disabled. This is the priming speed. Again, if we set the max to 2850, we can't program this to run above 2850. Three minutes, so we're gonna go ahead and change this to six minutes because by definition, self-priming pump is one that primes itself within six minutes. Hit save. Priming range, milliseconds, and that's it. Thermal mode. Now this is important for people that live in colder regions. We want to click into that. We want to enable it. We want it on speed type. We're going to set it for 1000 RPMs and for 40 degrees. 
So what thermal mode does is protects the pipes from freezing. So once this pump recognizes that the water temperature is 40 degrees or below, it's going to set it to run for 1,000 RPM so it raises above that temperature. And that's it. So that's how you program the pump. Bring it back here to the main screen and turn it back on. You just hit the start stop button and it's going to prime up and then run to whatever speed it's programmed to run at. So hopefully guys helps, helps guys and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know what you think.